Alrighty then. All right, this is going to be my last lesson because I'm running very, very short on battery. Concerning women, I don't do a lot of lessons on women, but there's a time and a place concerning women. All right? And there's going to be a little positivity up in there. So we're going to go to Proverbs 30. Mm -hmm. Proverbs 31. The words of King Lemuel. The prophecy that his mother taught him. So, yeah, his mother, a woman, taught him certain things about other women. How other women are. And what to look out for. Right? What, my son? And what's the son of my womb? And what the son of my vows? Give not thy strength unto women. And this is a woman saying this. Give not thy strength unto women. So, what's your strength? Your all. Your everything. It doesn't mean you don't love her now, because one may say, what have you got? No, you're not giving your all to them. Right? In other words, you're not bending over backwards to please them. Right? Because a lot of people, they do give all their strength unto women, and they become depleted. <laughs> okay? And it says... No ways that to that which destroyeth kings. So there's many ways a king could be destroyed. Alright. It is not. Is it not for kings or Lemuel? Is it not for kings to drink. To drink wine or princes strong drink wine. Because it could throw off their judgment. If it's too much. It could throw off their judgment. And it says. Lest they drink and forget the law. And pervert the judgment of any. Of the afflicted. So it's telling you why. Lest their mind become swayed. Okay. Verse 6. Give strong drink unto him that is ready to perish. So in terms of drink, yeah, you can give strong to him that's ready to perish. Drink strong wine. And it says, Baba Kishal, and those may be of heavy hearts. Let him drink and forget his poverty. Main thing. Now let's jump to verse 10. The price of a virtuous woman. Who can find a virtuous woman? Godly woman. We got the traits for her price is far above rubies. But of but the heart of her husband doth safely trust in her, so that he shall have no need of spoil. Key thing, no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. The wool and flax. What is that? The weaver. Weaving clothing. Alright. She would do him goods. Right? She would do. <laughs> and this is Baba Kisha. She would do him good and not evil. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant ships. She bringeth her food from afar. She is like the merchant ship. She bringeth her food afar. So, guess what? Those scriptures ain't completely outlawing women doing something working. She gathers the food herself. Read that again. She is like the merchant ship. She bringeth her food from afar. She also knows how to hunt. I mean, the scriptures ain't completely against women providing for themselves. Because then it wouldn't, it wouldn't say this. But she's doing it for the household. And this is the whole thing. A household is what? A part of your economy, right? And that's what you're building up. You have your wife. You have your children. That's all a part of your economy. And you have the place where you dwell. She ariseth also while it is yet night and giveth meat to her household. It doesn't, it doesn't even say the man does. She does. And a portion to her maidens, her servants. She considereth her fields and buyeth it. So she's got money. With the fruit of her hand, she planted the vineyards. Right? Now this ain't promoting um, your independent lifestyle. But this is a woman that is somewhat, she, she, know, she knows how to work. Right? She ain't just sitting on an arse all day, depending on the man. Right? And this is what because she She girded for lies with strength. So like an apron she's got on. Right? And strength of her arms. So she gets busy. She knows how to weave, um, make different clothing. Right? Cook. Right? The whole lot. Even fish. Right? Now, how many women in the Western world do you know they, they can do that? Very, very few. Alright? 
You tell them to cook some rice, they can't even cook the rice, they're burning up the rice. And it says, Baba Kishar, check this out. She perceived that her merchandise is goods. Her candle go off not out by night, so she even has a candle, probably a, a oil lamp or something. She layeth her hands to the spindle and her hands hold it for staff. So you have the spindle and you have the staff, which makes the clothing. Right, spindle, type in spindle. Ancient way of, of woving certain things. Okay. She stretcheth out her hand to the poor. Yeah, she reacheth forth her hands to the needy. She stretcheth out her hands. She is not afraid of the snow for her household. So even when it's snowing, she's still out. Getting what she needs to get. She ain't worried. She ain't worried about no no pedicure. Oh my my finger no. no. Right? And it says, for her house are the cloth with scarlet. She maketh herself covens of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. Her husband is known in the gates, so her husband is a man of reputation. When he sitteth among the elders of the land, she maketh fine linen, fine clothing. And sell a fit and deliver girdles unto the merchant. So she's making, she's making clothing. That's what the spindle's for and uh, the staff to make clothing. And she's got some of the finest of linen. And she's selling that linen as well. Right? And sell a fit and deliver girdles unto the merchant. Strength and honor of her clothing. And she rejoices in the time to come. She opened her mouth with wisdom. And in her tongue is a law of kindness. So she knows the scriptures as well. She looketh well to her ways of her household. See, it's about household. Yeah, the woman is there to look household, the economy, and make sure everything's the way it's supposed to be. But the man is, yeah, he's head of that, but she plays her role as well. It's not just one-sided. She looketh well to her ways of her household and eateth not the bread of idleness. She doesn't want no bread of, of laziness. If you're a lazy person, you offer her a meal, she doesn't want it. <laughs> and her children arise up and call her Bless her husband also He praiseth her Many daughters have done virtuously But excelleth them all Favour is deceitful And beauty is vain There's more than a there's more to a woman than beauty Now I'd be lying to you If I said oh well um, The women I go for They have to be no, they, Obviously you, you like a beautiful woman But scripture says beauty is vain If Am I saying it right? Favour is deceitful and beauty is vain. <laughs> but a woman at that fair of the Lord, she shall be praised because you could have a not so nice looking woman, but she has that character and she knows how to conduct herself. Then you might have a very beautiful woman, but she's ugly because the way she acts. And it says, give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise thee in her gate. So... This is this is it. This describes a good yes. Is there is is there women out there that have those traits? Yeah, there is, but it's very rare. That's why King Solomon said, "Out of a thousand women, out of a thousand women, I found one. I found none." And that's King Solomon. King Solomon said that out of a thousand women, I did not find one that was righteous. And King Solomon said, out of all the men out of a thousand, he found one man that was righteous. So it's very far few and in between. But there is righteous, there is righteous women that will serve you. Right? Because the scripture says it. But it says, who can find a virtuous woman? You're going to be looking high and low and everywhere just to find that. So Lord willing, I'm going to shut off here. Lord willing, this was edifying. And until the next time. Shalom to the hopeful elect. Shalom.